What is high impedance? We hear this term all the time when discussing both guitar and bass gear, as well as sometimes with pro audio gear. Usually high impedance is mentioned when talking about inputs and outputs. With pedals, for example, we often hear that it's desirable to have a high input impedance. Putting numbers to it, it's pretty commonly accepted that impedance over 600 ohms is considered high impedance, while impedance under 600 ohms is considered low impedance. But to begin today, we should define impedance. Impedance is a resistance of a circuit or device to AC or alternating current flow. Alternating current is electric current flow that reverses direction periodically. It has both positive and negative components to the waveform. An example would be the electricity that comes out of the common household wall outlets. But more importantly for our purposes, audio signals are also alternating current. Impedance makes a big difference in how current, including audio signals, flows through a system. Think about it this way. It's very easy to drive power through a low impedance which has lower resistance or less resistance. And it's more difficult to drive power through a high impedance because there's more resistance to the current with high impedance. But the gotcha here is that low impedance could put more strain on whatever is producing the power. For this reason, most audio devices have high input impedances, so they can be driven by a low output power. And I know that seems counterintuitive. Common sense says that something called low impedance would have less resistance to AC flow and therefore be easier to drive, and yes, that's definitely true. But as I mentioned, this comes with a problem. That low impedance input demands more and more signal, and something like a guitar pickup can't put out enough signal beyond a certain point. After that point, the signal starts to get loaded down. With a wall outlet in your house, if things get loaded down because you've plugged in too many toasters or air fryers or TVs or whatever, the fuse or circuit bracket in the house blows to protect everything from damage from too much current flowing. With a guitar, when the signal gets loaded down by low impedance, the sound changes. It gets weaker, you lose highs, and it sounds dull. Now, when we send that same tiny guitar pickup signal into a high impedance input, not as much current can flow. The high impedance has more resistance and it's harder for the pickup to drive. But in this case, that's okay, because it's not really the current we want to get into our pedals or amplifier or whatever, it's the voltage that we want, because the voltage gives us the picture or the shape, if you will, of our audio signal that we need. So it's all good. To summarize, high impedance inputs let the pickups function without being loaded down, and that's the important thing. And this is also where buffers come in. A buffer converts impedance. What it does is boost or amplify current, but it doesn't affect voltage. And that's where the term unity gain buffer comes from. The voltage is the same on the input and the output. Only the current is affected. These are the types of buffers that are built into many pedals and other audio devices. So the general rule is counterintuitive. For many types of audio gear, we want a low impedance output feeding into a high impedance input. Generally, it's recommended that the input impedance be at least 10 times as high as the impedance of the output that's driving it. So if your device has an output impedance of 25,000 ohms, then you'd want the input impedance of the device it's feeding to be at least 250,000 ohms. For guitar and bass gear, even higher input impedance can be good. We often see input impedances for guitar gear of 500,000 ohms, a million ohms, or even higher. And I should add a caveat here, this is really a pretty simplified look at the whole impedance thing. Lots of variables can affect impedance. For example, changing the volume or tone knob on your guitar also changes its output impedance. And active pickups are different than passive pickups when it comes to impedance, because there's an integral preamp built in that's setting the output impedance for the unit. There are other aspects to this as well. For example, most guitar amplifier effects loops work best with low impedance devices, and most have buffers built in to manage impedance. But this means if you want to put a volume pedal in your effects loop, it'll usually work better if you use a low impedance volume pedal, like you'd use for a keyboard, rather than a high impedance volume pedal like you'd normally use for a guitar. So after all that tech talk, in the real world, here's the takeaway. In general, you want low impedance to feed high impedance throughout a signal path for best results. In many cases, for guitar or bass, best practice would dictate using a buffer at the beginning of the signal path and often another buffer at the end of the signal path to help maintain signal strength and to optimize impedance. Thanks for watching. If you want to learn more about audio and music concepts like this, visit the news and research page at sweetwater.com or check out the other videos in our glossary terms playlist.